are now approaching nine out of ten doctrines. Am I correct? So, I know. So if you were running um, the marathon, you would be nine-tenths of the way through. 23.58 miles. If you're following March Madness, you would be approaching the semifinals just about now. But you're not in a marathon. You're not running a marathon. And we're not at that point in March Madness. So we're right here. And here's a bit of exercise, something practical for you to do today. I'd like for you to take your right hand, everyone, and touch your left hip. Everyone, right hand, everyone. Right hand to left hip. Everyone there? And then I want you to swing your right hand over and touch your right hip. Okay, what you've just done is put on your seat belts. We have a lot to cover today, <laughs> and I really need for you to track with me. Are you there? As Dr. Sanders introduced um, this session, it is on sanctification or spiritual formation. There are three types of sanctification. The first is positional sanctification. And if you follow along with the notes that you've been given, this is Christ's righteousness that has been imputed and or credited to us. <coughs> positional uh, sanctification. It is when you prayed the sinner's prayer and your position changed from sinner to saint, in that now you are a member of God's family. Your position has changed. The second type of sanctification is progressive sanctification. Progressive sanctification is as the believer grows and um, in victory over sin and growth in Christ's likeness. Perfective sanctification, oh, by the way, with progressive sanctification, um, how long is this? How long does this last? A lifetime, yeah, it's a lifetime, it's a lifelong process. The third type of sanctification is perfective sanctification, and it's when believers are changed into his likeness, Christ's likeness, at his return. Some might wonder then, well, where does spiritual formation come in? If you were to do a, a library search 20 years ago for spiritual formation, you probably wouldn't get very many hits. If you did it for sanctification, you would. Spiritual formation, then, addresses progressive sanctification. Spiritual formation, then, addresses progressive sanctification. Well, why sanctification? Why go through this process? Because after all, can't we ask that question, if, it's, if God's going to do it at the end anyway, why do we have to get involved? Well, again, following your notes, it is God's will. 1 Thessalonians 4.3, we can look that up later. And God commanded it. Again, another scripture basis in Hebrews 12. It also follows the examples of Christ, as well as it benefits the community, the church, and attracts the lost. So why sanctification? Well, there are a number of reasons. The purpose, though, um, as we'll find in Hebrews 5, verses 12 and 13, is to become mature Christians with spiritual discernment, and that requires time and training in the Word. Over the years, as I've taught um, spiritual transformation, and Dallas Willard likes to refer to Christian spiritual transformation, he says that our spirits are always being formed, and what we're looking at more specifically is Christian spiritual transformation. And we see these elements that we've already addressed. I came across this definition a number of years ago, I think 2005, and I want you to tell me why after years and years of collecting various definitions of spiritual transformation, that this particular definition caught my attention. As you read this to yourself, what are some elements that catch your attention that probably caught mine. Now I'll take your reflections. Why do you think this definition caught my attention? Yes.
absolutely excellent point. <clears throat> when we talk about spiritual transformation, we want to think about it being involved, uh, us and um, this process being involved in community. Absolutely, it's not just between me and God. Okay, good. What else? Yes. Absolutely, you'll see um, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And oftentimes in spiritual transformation, we think about, oh, it's just between me and God, or it's just something that I need to do. And we fail to recognize that the triune God, the Trinity, is involved in our spiritual transformation. Okay, excellent. Anything else? Yes? Just like the scope of things it incorporates into this definition. It's just really broad. I mean, I don't know. Just, yeah, touching on all these different yeah, and there are a number of realities. Again, not only the Trinity, and not only the community, but what else? It's a process. It is a process. Yes, it is a process. It's not a been there, done that type of thing. It is a lifelong process. And I like the way Greenman says this. It's a continuing response. And that means that God always does the initiating. We never have to dream anything up. He always does the initiating, and therefore our response and our responsibility is to respond to what he's already doing. It's a continuing response to what he is already doing. Anything else? Yeah. Okay, it's for, okay, excellent. I'm glad you picked that up. Big C, little C church. And we see for the sake of the world that our, somehow that our spiritual transformation, our growing in Christ likeness, not only impacts the church, our local community, but it also impacts the world. So there's purpose in our spiritual transformation. Does that make sense? All right. Well, who's involved in this, as we mentioned before, and that is um, the Trinity. And for this, I'm going to need a bit of help. So I will need four volunteers, quickly. One, two, three, and four. Come on up, quickly. What's your name? Haley. Haley? Stay right here, Haley. Okay. All right, hey, name? Megan. Megan. Gabriel. Gabriel. Marjorie. Marjorie. Megan, Gabriel, and, G and Marjorie have a bit of an easy task. Uh, they have five seconds, five seconds to determine between the three of them who's going to be Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Ready, go. <laughs> okay. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Now, they may need a little bit of help because this ne next task may require just a little bit more thought. I'd like for them to show us what the communion, what the community of the Trinity looks like. Oh. <laughs> what, what the community of the Trinity looks like. Okay. Okay. You can't talk to me. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. You can't talk to me. Oh, wait. <laughs> Did I tell you that they might need a little help? Heresy, yeah. Okay, and that's what we want to avoid. Yeah. I'd like for you to demonstrate the community okay. that the three of the triune <laughs> look like. Okay. Do, ha ha, where, who is that? What was that? Yes. All right, there we go. Okay, now, stay right there. When I want to tell you a little bit about the Trinity, they are complete. The Trinity is complete in and of itself. It needs nothing, and it needs no one. The, com the Trinity is complete in and of itself. It needs nothing, and it needs no one. But the love of the Father through the Son by the Holy Spirit. Megan? Haley. Haley. Megan. Haley. Haley comes walking on her journey. And at one point in her journey, she recognizes that she needs a savior. She prays the sinner's prayer and she begins to then enjoy some of the perks, some of the benefits that the very first small group gets to enjoy. So, Trinity, 
what might that look like without being heretical? <laughs> How might we incorporate this sinner turned saint as that's, you're still together, right? Okay. <laughs> um, we were anticipating. You're anticipating. So what might that look like for the sinner to begin to enjoy some of the aspects, whoa, 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 whoa. careful. Uh, no. Yeah, I like, I like, no. 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 Okay. I don't know. I'm just oh, okay. much better, oh, don't okay. you think? All right. Okay. okay, now give him a hand. Very good job. Okay. One of the aspects of becoming a sinner turned saint and being part of God's family is that we get to know God. Jeremiah 9, 23 and 24 says this, let not a wise man boast of his wisdom, or a strong man boast of his might, or a rich man boast of his riches. But let, let him who boasts boast of this, that he knows me and understands me, that I am the Lord who exercises loving kindness, justice, and righteousness throughout all the earth. What this simple passage says is that we serve a God who desires to be known. He wants to be known. And we have the privilege and honor and responsibility of getting to know him. So sanctification, this spiritual formation, then is this lifelong continuing process of knowing the truth of who God is. So who's involved? Well, we've already seen this, and you can uh, take a few seconds to fill in that chart. You'll notice the alliteration there. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. This chart is taken from Henry Holloman's book, The Forgotten Blessing. So the Trinity's involvement in our sanctification, in our Christian spiritual transformation. Christian spiritual transformation, then, is a lifelong continuing process of knowing the truth of who God is and knowing the truth of who we are and living that out. We are created in the image of God, an image present before the fall, <clears throat> and that has survived the fall. And then because of that, we are inextricably linked to who he is. If we are inextricably linked to who he is, then who are you? If spiritual Christian Christian spiritual transformation is a learning process of learning who he is and who we are in him, then who are you? It's far beyond a question that Zoolander asks as he uh, looks into the reflection in that puddle. Who are you? Do you ever ask yourself that question? Who are you? Reminded that Christian spiritual transformation is coming to the right answer of who am I? And then living out our lives in the truth of that proper identity. Haley showed us earlier that in her journey in life, she can be depicted here as a glass of milk. Haley, where are you? Thank you very much. When she prayed the sinner's prayer, she became a member of God's family. She was given the gift of the Holy Spirit in full. <laughs> oh, excuse me. And as Haley understood what it meant to be a child of God, she likely prayed sang worship songs, became part of a community, large and small, read her Bible. So might I ask you, what did Haley become? Oh, what kind of chocolate milk? Delicious. Delicious chocolate milk. <laughs> what else? Notice the Stirred. emphases. Stirred chocolate milk. Good. <laughs> it's probably another and probably not in this room right now this person too prayed the sinner's prayer 
and was accepted into God's family. In that, that very moment, was given the gift of the Holy Spirit in full. Really in full. Stop <laughs> fix this thing. Is. Question. Are they both saved? Question. Are they both saved? Absolutely. But one is becoming more of what he or she was designed to become. Both accepted into God's family. But only one is becoming more and more of what that person was des designed originally to become. Stir chocolate milk. And, and as we learn and are stirred, we learn more and more about our identity in Christ. We let the truth of who he is impact who we are and the knowledge of who we are. Why then is it that we understand that we are new creations, yet when asked about our identity in Christ, I have this assignment and one simply needs to just complete the incomplete sentence at the top of the page. It reads this, since I'm in Christ, by the grace of God, I am. There are a host of passages that my students look up, not just to cut and paste, but to actually process and think about what that uh, passage or verse says, and they complete that sentence. Since I am in Christ, by the grace of God, I am complete. I am forgiven. I am loved. But alongside that worksheet, I ask another question. Did you know who you are before you did this worksheet? <clears throat> in any given semester, anywhere from 60 to 90% of my students say no. I don't know who I am in Christ, or I have forgotten. I ask them this question, what does it look like when you forget who you are in Christ? Here are some of the responses. Do you resonate with any of these? <clears throat> I feel ugly, unworthy, weak, dirty, not good enough, stupid, unloved, filled with shame. I become depressed, unhappy, self-absorbed, restless, angry, bitter, dissatisfied, sad, fearful, discontent, and prideful with a tendency to compare and doubt. I become ignorant of my flaws. I believe I am a failure. I look like a non-Christian. Because I'm filled with pride, the road is full of pain and disappointment, which is actually quite hard to turn from. I look and act like everyone else, nothing distinguishing there is about me. I am not unique. I go through the motions of living a Christian life. I do and say things I would never do and say. I complain, I gossip, I hate, I slander. Life is without joy. Life is meaningless. My eyes don't sparkle. I'm lost in the darkness of insecurity and doubt. Waves of unworthiness overcome me. I lose the hope within my soul. I am fake, I am empty. I am lonely, cold. I am like a tomb. My actions, good or bad, are motivated by peer approval depression and intense feelings of inadequacy take root. I see myself very needy and seeking approval and very defensive. My prayers are copycats of others' prayers. I'm controlling. I act like I have everything together, like nothing is wrong, but inside I can feel that something is not right. I engage in only small talk, never getting into serious matters. Guilt can change and mangle the soul to a point that that person is unrecognizable. I waste hours in front of the television, my computer. I am like a tree without leaves or roots. <coughs> Folks, that's an implosion ready to happen. When we fail to recognize who God is and who we are in him. How then does the world become impacted by us as believers if we don't know who we are in him or have forgotten who we are in him. 
Jonathan Edwards quote, quotes Lord Shaftesbury in saying that the wrong idea of God will hurt society as much, if not more than, ignorance of him. Ignorance of him. Would someone read this from the back row, please? Describing pseudo-formation, pseudo-transformation, unstirred chocolate milk. You may walk like, talk like, smell like, and on other campuses, dance like a Christian. <laughs> but have little or none of the spirit-wrought inner transformation that we were designed to have and to experience. Pseudo-transformation. I think this image describes this. Pseudo transformation. What words come to mind when you see this image? Very compartmentalized. I heard that word. Would you agree with me? Compartmentalized. Are you the same person Sunday morning as you are Sunday night? Are you the same person whether you are with your parents or your friends or your, your boss? On a Saturday night versus a Wednesday night, are you the same person? Or do we live compartmentalized lives? Different people knowing us in a different way. In that sense, perhaps Gordon MacDonald has this to say. Someone again, back row, please. Excuse me. What phrases <coughs> catch your attention? What words or phrases catch your attention? The long haul. Spiritual transformation. The process. Any other words catch your attention? Emerge. 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 They say that uh, you really don't know what a tea bag is made out of in the, until you put it in some hot water. Any other words or phrases? Ah, oh, this is what caught my attention. The default me. Who am I really? Who am I really? This morning, I ran to uh, Albertsons uh, to purchase these. Anyone? Care for a banana? <laughs> okay. They pay me not to pitch. <laughs> Careful. <laughs> oh dear. All right. You know, I took these uh, to the checker, and uh, surprisingly, um, she charged me for bananas. I was a little surprised because all I did was give her banana peels. I didn't give her bananas. I gave her bana uh, a bunch of banana peels. But how did she know to charge me for bananas? This is not a trick question. <laughs> How did she know to charge me for bananas? Yeah, perhaps she's eaten a banana in her lifetime, and she's pretty certain that inside of a banana is a banana. Inside of a banana peel is a banana. I mean, does that make sense? This is not a philosophy class, but you can understand. Okay, so uh, before our, um, my guests break into their bananas, ah, guess what? that indeed inside of a banana peel is a banana. Do you know why there's a banana inside of a banana peel? Again, not a trick question. <laughs> it's a default banana. <laughs> it's because what God makes, he makes with integrity. You will never find strawberries or watermelon inside of a banana peel. You will always find a banana. Here's the catch. God 
made you with integrity. So that no matter who you're with, time of day, where you are, you are the same person. You are the same person. So spiritual formation, spiritual transformation, then is the lifelong continuing process of knowing the truth of who God is and who you are in him and living that out. Christian spiritual transformation. Biola University offers a variety of biblically-centered degree programs, ranging from business to ministry to the arts and sciences. Visit biola.edu to find out how Biola could make a difference in your life.